episode 22, and we're doing Q&A. And here's the first two questions. Question number one came in today. How do I know that I'm saved? Isn't that a great question? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you five reasons, five, uh, five reasons why you know that you've been born again. Okay, and I want to read to you from the scriptures from 1 John um, 1, 1 John chapter 1, verses uh, 8 and 9. Okay, you, you'll know this. Uh, you, you'll, you'll understand this once I read it to you. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's a faith issue. But hear me, sometimes you just don't feel it and you want to know it, right? So let me give you these five simple points. Number one, it is a relationship with God and with his people, okay? So I really believe that that's important to understand that it's not just a relationship with God, but it's a relationship with his people also, okay? Number two, obedience to his word. Obedience to his word. How can you say that you love me, right, and not obey my commandments? Right? So I think that's really important. Number three, freedom. Freedom from your past. Okay? And throw joy in there. Freedom slash joy. Okay? That's a really powerful thing. And I know some of you struggle with your past. And we've been set free from our past. Right? Uh, number four is, to me, the greatest characteristic, and that is love. The greatest characteristic of Christianity is love. Right? By this will all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And I know being a disciple is a little bit different than being saved because when you, as a convert, maybe love doesn't come out right away when you're squeezed, right? But as a disciple, it will. So look at those, those things. And then finally, and this is what's gonna lead us to the second question tonight, and that is hope. Hope. You have a future, okay? You may feel like your past has messed you up and you're tied to it, but as a Christian, there's this hope, okay? So, relationship with God and with people, obedience to the word, freedom, love, relationships with, with people, you know, and with God, it goes back to that first one, and then, and then finally, hope. So those are the proofs or the fruit of being born again. Isn't that awesome? That you can, you can know that. And so if you're struggling with that, you know, uh, Play this over and walk through those things in your life. Okay, let me move to the second question, okay? Uh, more of a leadership question, all right? And the question is this. My students are depressed. I need help. What do I do, right? Listen, you're not the only one. This is one of the difficult problems in the youth culture today. Whether it's uh, the millennials or the Gen Z set, they are so driven and they are so competitive and they are so special, right, and elite that they somehow, sometimes just do not feel like they fit in or they've done enough, right? So I'm gonna give you five um, depression helps, okay? So as a leader, this will help you to understand depression more and how you can, and you'll see at the end, I'm gonna give you, at the end of each one, I'm gonna give you a little uh, practical help. But listen, if you're a student listening in, or to be honest, if you're a youth leader and you're struggling with this, I wanna define some of these two. You'll see where I'm going with this, like where depression comes from and what it causes, okay? So some of you maybe are wondering, man, I don't know, what I've been, I've been in this funk, right? And maybe this will help. So uh, here's some depression help. Number one, health issues. Listen, I truly believe that one of the reasons why many people are depressed is because of a lack of wellness. They're not sleeping right. They're not eating right. They're not in shape physically, mentally, socially, emotionally, right? And so when you look at wellness, that has a lot to do with how you feel about yourself. So, you know, uh, here, the practical help here is get more sleep, Okay, the power of a nap, right? Get more sleep, eat better, exercise more, okay? And brain wellness. What I like to call emotional intelligence, right? Emotional intelligence. A lot of us look at IQ, our intelligent quotient, but what about our 
EQ, our emotional quotient, right? So anyway, number two, um, depression help number two. Perspective is a powerful solution to any situation. Perspective. So let me, let me do it this way, right? I want you right now to put your hand, like I'm doing, in front of my face, okay? Come on, do it. I know you're watching, you're thinking, no, I'll just watch him do it, okay? Listen, if, if this hand is your problem, and you focus on this, and that is your only perspective, you can't see anything. I can see the ceiling above me. I can see the ground below me, but I can't see, I can't see you, right? But what has to happen is, we have to take that problem and get a better perspective by removing the problem away from us and not staring at the problem. Because hear me, some of you, your problem is bigger than God. And I'm not here to minimize your problem, okay? I know you have real problems. I'm not here to minimize your problem, I'm here to maximize your God. And so perspective has a lot to do with depression. Some, here, here's the practical help, okay? Don't overemphasize your problems, overemphasize God, okay? Second, change your place. Sometimes the reason why you're depressed is because you've been in the same setting, in the same place, in the same squad, the same people, and, and you're hearing the same things. Just change your perspective, okay? And that can help, that can, that can really help. Um, okay, number three, relationships, okay? Here's number three help on depression help. Relationships are key, okay? Relationships are key. All of you have a university around you of experience. Let me tell you something, you are not the only one going through this issue. You may feel like there's nobody else, right? You may feel like, man, I'm the only one who's ever gone through this. Let me tell you something, there is somebody in your circle who's gone through the same thing and they won. And so for you to get around them, it will help you tremendously. Um, listen, relationships get broken because of anger, your attitude, your negativity or your isolation. That you get this problem in your life and you isolate yourself from everybody else. Listen, you need a friend, okay? You need a friend. So if you're depressed or you're working with people who are depressed, don't let them isolate themselves in the youth ministry. Get them in the right circles and put them in the right squads and get them in the right posse or a tribe, right? So uh, that's the solution there. Don't do, don't do life alone. You need one friend. You need one freaking friend, okay? Just one. And sometimes what happens is you don't have a friend and so you bury yourself under that issue and the problem you're going through. Okay, number four, uh, under uh, depression help, is idolatry steals away your worship. Now, you might think, man, where does this come from? Let me tell you something, worship, is a key to your attitudes and your feelings. And if you worship the world and the things of this world, it can be depressing. You know why? Because you worship the things of this world and you don't look like, like the world tells you you're supposed to look. You don't make what the world tells you you're supposed to make. You don't have the right friends, right? So you start valuing, valuing your life by the things of the world. And that's depressing. But I'm telling you, if you value yourself by the things of God, right? So that worship it is so important. You need to change your music. You do. You need to change your music. Um, so here's the solution for that. Um, worship and uh, presence. I do it all the time. Right before we came on, uh, I, had a, I was rushed today, man. I, I was coming back out of town and literally just got a ride from a friend here to do this. And my mind was buzzing. And so I said, I just got to put some worship on right? And it changes the atmosphere, okay? So um, when idolatry and looking at the wrong things and worshiping the wrong things can move us into depression. Okay, the last one is a Sabbath. And this goes back to maybe the wellness area. You got to slow down. Listen, being busy doesn't mean you're spiritual, okay? Let me tweet that again. Being busy doesn't mean you're spiritual, okay? Being busy only adds to all the files in your mind and all of the things you're processing, slow down. It is a commandment. The Sabbath is a commandment. It's not just this idea. God just didn't say, you know what, things would be better if you just, you know, uh, slow down. No, it's important for you to stop everything. You gotta do that more. You gotta take time off, okay? 
So uh, anyway, I, I did something. I did a thing, okay? Some of you know I love spoken words. And today when I heard that question, I was uh, on the plane, I was, I'm flying in, and I wrote this spoken word on the plane. So don't judge me, okay? Don't judge me. But I really believe that like, the Holy Spirit wants to use this. So let me give you this spoken word, okay? Stressed and desserts are almost the same word. They're just spelled in reverse. You might think they look the same, but one is a blessing and the other one a curse. Look at these two opposite thoughts. Stressed, what a curse, it's the worst. Teens today are living in the same kind of stress that mental health hospital patients were exposed to in the 50s. Broken dreams and families. Life seems like a joke with no hope. I never had a place to call my own. I never had a home. Ain't nobody calling my phone. Where you been? Where you at? What's on your mind? I've been running low. I've been taking my time. You feel like you're out of your mind. I feel like my life don't count right. It's not mine. Who can relate? I don't want to be alive. I don't want to be alive. They say every life is precious, but what? who cares about mine? Right? Stressed. How about desserts? Look at the opposite of this word. Tastes like a great church service. Feels like a great song. Desserts are like a long conversation with a new friend. It's like taking your hand away from your face. Desserts are refreshing like a nap in your favorite place. Listen, there's always hope to cope. Even when you feel broke, hope. Hope is like, it's like the very first breath when your head's been drowning under the water. It's holding on though the roads that you can't see when you're staring at your reflection, finding hope in all your days. And I know you'll thank God when you do. Find hope in everything. Hope is like baseball, apple pie on the 4th of July. It's like an ice cream sundae. It's like a monthly birthday. Hope is like a text from your best friend in a movie with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Hope is like waking up and it's sunny. It's like a great joke that's actually funny. See, hope is the way, the way out of pain, out of strain and cutting. Hope stops self-harm and crying. It gives you the feeling like you're winning and still swimming and not drowning. And the great news is that hope is a person like your best friend. Listen, what's the day without a little night? I just try to shed a little light. If I can be hard, like, listen, life can be hard. It can be so hard, but you gotta live right now. You got everything to give right now. I'm moving my legs until they give out. I don't wanna cry anymore. I don't wanna cry anymore. I wanna feel alive. I don't even wanna die anymore. Listen, some of you see a light at the, at the end of the tunnel and you think it's a train, but it's not. It's an answer. You think it's rain and lightning, but it's not. It's a blessing. But you have to learn to see differently. Not like a cynic or a critic, like you're a Pharisee, sad, you see? Mm -mm. You have to see differently and believe that life is more than hypocrisy or a news release. Life is like a dessert, not stressed, but desserts. Just turn the word around, like a merry-go-round and a turnaround jumper. Listen, you deserve to eat desserts and not feel stressed. Live life, it's your best, right? So anyway, hey, I hope this was a blessing to you. We answered those two simple questions, how do I know that I'm saved? And then secondly, my students are depressed, what do I do? So you can follow along with this, okay, at youthology.com by Tuesday. I'll have this all set up and you, you can read the blog and then it'll be up uh, tonight or tomorrow on YouTube. I'll post product this and get it going at youtube.com forward slash Jeff Grinnell, thank you for joining us for 12 minutes of learning at Youthology Live. I will see you next week.